If you thought you were doing something right, but later found out it was wrong, when would you want to know? Now, right? Better question. What would you do about it? In this episode of the Wealth and Wisdom series, we're going to discuss some bad habits to stop now and do these things instead in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad. Starting in three, two, one. Let's go. What's crack a lacking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And uh, if you've already watched a couple of our videos and uh, you want to get the message out of the perspective of wealth building, prosperity, leadership development from King Solomon, who's regarded as the wealthiest and wisest king who ever lived, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of episodes already, if you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe. Okay, let's get into it. So, what are some of the bad habits a lot of people are doing? They don't know that it's a bad habit that's actually keeping you from your God-given purpose, expressing your full talent, and getting financially to where you want to go. So, let's discuss some of these bad habits. So, in this category, as we unpack a proverb a week, every week, for the next 31 weeks. We're now in the 20th week in Proverbs 20. And uh, my intention is to not read the entire Proverbs to you, but to just grab some of the key ones that I thought would have resonated from a wealth building perspective, from a legacy creation perspective, from a leadership development perspective, that I encourage you also to crack open Proverbs chapter 20 and read it for yourself. Then again, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a teacher. I don't have a master's or bachelor's in divinity. I'm just simply an entrepreneur trying to figure out this world, wanting to ground my life, my business, my family, on principles and values that have stood the test of time throughout the history of humankind. So distractions, disloyalty, and laziness. That's all written here in Proverbs chapter 20. So the first one here, wine and beer. What? A distraction? Let's take a look at what it says here in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. It reads like this. Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. Now, does it say that you can't have a beer? Does it say that you can't have a glass of wine? Of course not. And by the way, some of my judgmental Christian crew on this will say, get away from beer and get away from wine. It's a different perspective we're looking at. Very conservative approach. But listen, there's nothing wrong with a glass of wine. There's nothing wrong with a glass of beer. However, if you're using wine and beer as a decision maker in your process of making a decision may not be the best thing for you. It could be a potential distraction. If you say, listen, I want to wind down or I want to eat a meal and have a glass of wine with it or I want to have a burger and a beer, knock yourself out. But if you're trying to make some big decisions in your life, it may not be the best decision potentially because it can get you drunk, it can get you uh, thinking differently. And how many of you have made bad decisions because of an overindulgence of wine and beer? What about not getting up to work? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4, it reads like this. Sluggards do not plow in season. So at harvest time, they look, but find nothing. So there is a time, there's a season for all things. When everybody's getting up to work, listen, I love just being lazy. I love just rolling around. But man, I tell you this, every day is a time for you to get to work. It's time to get after it. So not getting up to work is a form of distraction and an example of laziness. Talk to talk versus walking to walk. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6, it reads like this. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find a lot of pro- people proclaim their loyalty. A lot of people proclaim, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. But really, who comes through? Even King Solomon, of all the people he's led, all the people he's ruled, even he questions this of who's talking to talk, who really means what they say. And sadly, for a lot of people, they bet on their horses too soon. And the people that thought would be loyal to them, the people that thought would be their ride or dies, sadly are not. My experience, only through the test of time, uh, challenges, uh, uh, some, of the, some of the worst times in your life that you experience, you'll find out who really is your ride or die in those moments, not when it's only good. So if you feel that that was a weakness in your life and you want to affirm that you're going to improve this area, please put in the comment section below, I am not talking the talk, I am walking the walk. I am not talking the talk, I am walking the walk. If you feel that way, please put it in the comment section below. All right, the next one, back to laziness. Do you love sleep or do you love being a provider? Proverbs chapter 20, verse 13, it reads like this. Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you have food to spare. Especially a father raising teenagers, raising adult kids. Hey, time to get to work. Make something from yourself. It's just not mom and dad being an a-hole to you. It's just not mom and dad saying, you know, you need to make yourself your own way. Make sure you do your job to get up, be productive, get to work, slam dunk it, have something to show for for this day. Feel very proud of your progress throughout that day. Did you learn something new? You did something new? You helped somebody else? You fixed a lot of problems out there? Do something with your life. It's right here in Proverbs. Do you love sleep? I'm not saying not get rest. You should. But at the same time, I suggest, or King Solomon here suggests, 
that it's better for you to be a provider and do something with your day the next one cheating others is a temporary game what cutting corners is not cool Proverbs chapter 20 verse 17 it reads like this food gained by fraud tastes sweet but one ends up with a mouth full of gravel see you might get away with cheating you might get away with uh the quick way the shortcut from stealing from other people but at the end of the day your mouth filled with gravel nothing okay and it tastes bad next one avoid these type of people you go about business you go about life who should you watch out for Proverbs chapter 20 verse 19 it reads like this a gospel betrays a confidence so avoid anyone who talks too much I remember one time we were looking for a pre-licensing provider for our licensed agents in Illinois and when three providers came through anyway one provider his daughter was taken over and anyway make a long story short she was big big chatterbox big chatterbox big chatterbox yeah do business with us because you know those offices over there with that other company ta -ta 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 -ta. yeah those offices with those other companies ta -ta -ta. do business with us you'll be happy with us blah, 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 blah. basically she was dropping the dimes on the riffraff that was going on with different offices even though she could provide a better service even though her, pro her service is probably a lot cheaper than what we were paying at the time I opted not to do business with her why because what happens over any extended period of time with anybody you build a relationship with you eventually will establish conflict with that person and instead of dealing with you directly instead they become a chatterbox about you to other people I just don't want that type of person in my life even though they provide a better service even though they provided a cheaper service I did opted not to do business with them because I want to avoid these type of people people that just gossip if you felt that you've allowed certain people in your circle that shouldn't be because they're gossipers please put in the comment section below I avoid gossipers in my life I avoid gossipers in my life starting with me that's what you feel put in the comment section below the affirmation put it right there okay what about those of you that think it's cool to curse out parents let's look at what King Solomon says here about cursing out and blaming your parents Proverbs chapter 20 verse 20 it reads like this if somebody curses their father or mother their lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness now I want to say for those of you who had horrific challenges with your parents I totally get it totally where you're coming from you're assaulted you're beaten you were abused I totally get where some of your pain comes from but for the rest of you who had not had had that extreme relationship with your parents what benefit is it for you to snob up to your parents and curse out your parents even though they're trying to do the very best for you to provide the best opportunities for you to provide the best access to you to show you some things that they never done in their entire life and yet you slander them yet you curse them and from some of you who are older who still hold the times that they were not there with your parents as you got older does it serve you to curse them because why because now your kids are watching you your kids are watching how you treat your parents and they expect your kids to treat you better than the way you treat your parents listen kids don't follow what you say they watch more so what you do all right last but not least how to make regretful decisions how to make regretful decisions follow this how to make regretful decisions Proverbs chapter 20 verses 25 it reads like this it is a trap to dedicate something rashly and only later to consider one's vows so in other words you make a quick decision in doing something and later pound up mm, should I do that should I have done that should I have sought counsel who was in my corner to help me provide that decision is the person biased in their counsel towards me the only one or two people that said it had I gotten a multitude of counselors to help me process the decision so a regretful decision when people make an emotional decision and then wonder later on ah, I regret it that's how you make a regretful decision by making a hasty type of decision okay let's move into what King Solomon says in this chapter about wealth building and insight so finding purpose in others it's one thing you find purpose in yourself but what's the benefit of you finding a purpose in other people let's look at what Proverbs 20 verse 5 has to say the purpose of a person's heart are deep waters but one who has insight draws them out so if you're a leader so listen man I, I need to find out what moves and drives my people you got to find out their deep insights people always give you a superficial decision if you truly want to lead people and guide people and help people get to their next best next best version of themselves your counselor your insurance agent your real estate agent you're a doctor your dentist find out what moves people you're an entrepreneur find out what moves people to do business with you if you find out the insights of going inside their heart by asking questions doing research uh, doing development finding out what matters to people that will help you in your endeavors in building wealth negotiations how should you deal with negotiations Proverbs chapter 20 verse 14 it reads like this it's no good it's no good says the buyer and then goes off and boasts about the purchase so think about this the Lord detests people that lie in the negotiation process 
It's a bad deal, man. It's a bad deal. It's a bad deal. They buy it anyway. They go back to the other. Ha ha ha. I got over on them on this one. I got over on them on this one. Listen, King Solomon in his dealings with money and his dealings with businesses never liked that. So if that's the way you want to go about business, guess what starts to circle around about you, about the way you do business, your reputation. And King Solomon says something more valuable than, than rubies and gold is a good reputation. Here's the next one. Do you want to help a friend with money that's not related to you? Well, do this. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 16, it reads like this. Take the garment of one who puts up security from a stranger. Hold it in pledge if it is done for an outsider. In other words, if you don't securitize the promise that somebody's going to pay you back with collateral, especially if it's not family, get something to hold in place if you lend this out. So therefore, if they don't pay you back, you have got something to sell in order to pay yourself back from the dealings of you lending money out to somebody who didn't pay you back. So consider doing that when it comes to lending out money. So gold and rubies, are they not as valuable as we thought they are? Let's take a look at what King Solomon has to say about that in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 15. Gold there is and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Sometimes people have opportunities to go elsewhere to make more money. On the surface level, it looks great. I got to do what's best for my family. On the surface level, it looks great. But what's really best for your family is seeking, according to King Solomon, somebody that has wisdom and knowledge. Because they pay you in things that simple money and, and assets cannot. It's the knowledge, it's the wisdom, it's the lessons, it's the experiences, it's the know-how. It's the soft cues that a lot of people don't pick up just because they have a higher paycheck. Because sometimes a higher paycheck doesn't add to the overall compensation plan of being associated with somebody. The next one is about going to work with somebody. Avenging when somebody's wronged you. What does King Solomon here in his Proverbs has to say about this? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 20, verses 18 and 22. It reads like this. Plans are established by seeking advice. So if you wage war, obtain guidance. Let's look at verse 22. Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord, and he will avenge you. So a couple things I take away from this. Number one, if you're going to wage something that's pretty drastic, make sure you obtain counsel, not just from your own emotions. The other portion is this. If you feel that somebody's wronged you, of course, you got to stand up for yourself and provide justice. But at the same time, there's a difference between asking for justice versus creating immediate revenge. The Bible says as much as you emotionally want to do this, wait on the Lord. He'll be the one that has vengeance and take vengeance for you. In the meantime, you got to stay focused and do your thing. That's about at least. But what about wealth building when it comes to kids and you give them too much money up front? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 20, verse 21. It reads like this. An inheritance claimed too soon will not be blessed at the end. In other words, always find ways to have your children inherit the values and principles of how to establish wealth, how to create wealth, how to compound wealth before you give them the actual money. One of the hardest things to do as a parent, because in my opinion, it only takes one person in a family's bloodline to change that generation forever, good or bad. So if you're seeking for good, and you say, listen, in my generation, I made a lot of money. In my generation, I made my millions. Awesome, more power to you. Or I'm about to make my millions in my generation. And some of you guys say, well, you know, my kids, I want to give them something I've never had before in my entire life. The challenge with that is in terms of giving them money too soon is, and I fall into those mistakes many times, is that you give them money too soon because you want to provide for them. You feel sorry for them. You want to help them out. You want to ease their pain and smooth out the wrinkles. But if you give it them too soon and they don't invoke or inherit the hard work and the, the hard parts of that wealth building that you put forth that they didn't, well, guess what? They're just going to spend that money away and act like that money's not theirs anyway even though your hard work and effort paid for everything. And by the way, I've been caught up in this many times. Why? Because I feel bad sometimes that my kids don't have enough. But what I'm actually robbing them is their ability to grow on their own. And that's what it takes to be able to inherit the financial estate because if they don't have the values and principles to inherit when they get the finances, the money side of it, well, guess what happens to the finance side of it if they don't have the values and principles and leadership ability to handle it? It's all going to go away. So with that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts, your questions. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? What are some of your thoughts and insights when it comes to your own journey, reading Proverbs chapter 20 in your own journey? Love to know what you're thinking. Please put it in the comment section below. If you haven't seen a couple of other episodes here of us breaking down Proverbs a week, every week in this Wealth and Wisdom series, here's a couple episodes for you to check out too as well. If you found value in this video, please consider hitting like. And if you haven't done so already and you watch a couple of these videos, please consider hitting subscribe and hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next video. 
That being said, I mean, my new smart guy from Dallas, Texas, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be mighty smart today. Yeah.